Hello everybody and welcome back to Sandy Bay. So I've been looking forward to today's episode for quite a long time because we're going to be using our class Dominator to harvest our oats. Now we haven't actually got the Dominator yet but we're going to buy it and yesterday I said I'd be happy if it was around £20,000 because obviously it's an old machine and uh, it would be a bit run down and everything. But I have just checked in here in the mods and it is actually, for the actual harvester itself, 61,000 which is quite expensive but it does work it works with the oats so I'm happy it's fine the header alone is actually almost what I thought the entire harvester would cost uh, to buy but it's it's fine it's just a bit expensive that's all so what we're going to do is we're going to go and fetch it we're going to drive it to the field begin harvesting hopefully finish harvesting as well today here it is it's actually such a good looking combine and I think for the time when when this thing was in production, I think it must have been the the 90s. I don't think it was late 80s. I think it was early 90s to, to mid 90s. Um, probably even a, a wider time frame than that, actually. But I always remember seeing one of these when I was younger, when I was about three or four. Um, I used to I used to live near a farm, and the farmer used to allow us to uh, actually go and watch the combine and stuff. And I used to enjoy watching it. And it was actually a class dominated similar to this. But it wasn't an 88S. I, I, th I, can't remember, I think it was a, a 108 or something. I can't remember. It was such a long time ago. But yeah, they're such good combines. I really do like to see one of these in action. And uh, actually, the sounds for this one, this mod, is fantastic. I've tested it just to make sure there's no problems. It is a bit loud, so I will put the volume to, to 10%. But um, the, the sounds on it are absolutely fantastic. So looking at the interior, the speedometer does actually, or revometer it is actually. Yes, we don't really need a speedometer. We've got two, we've got a number of dials here. They're all fully functioning. Obviously, it is a basic cab because it is basic in real life. So although it looks a bit sparse in here, it is actually very accurate. And because the header is so small, we can get away with driving on the road without even having a header trailer. So we'll drive up to the field now. It's going to take a little while because it's got a top speed of 13 miles per hour. It is fairly slow, but it's fine. It is a good machine. I'm looking forward to this. If you didn't watch yesterday's episode, we've already taken the tractor and trailer up there. So all we have to do is just get this thing set up and we'll be on our way. So yeah, we're, we're, we're clipping the hedgerows a bit, but really, we can get away with driving this on this road. It's not even that busy, and we don't have that far to go. So this harvester doesn't technically have interactive control. But it does still have a number of features. For example, when you're driving, you can put the, the ladder up there by pressing keypad 8. We won't put it down because we'll probably take it off by hitting a hedge or a tree. Uh, and you can also open the door, which we'll do when we get to the field. I think if we open the door now, it's just going to smash into the ladder. There is our field just over there. You can see the tractor and trailer just about, just over the, the header there. It's not too noisy at the moment, but when you actually get it fired up, when you when you get the, the header going and all the threshing units inside, it is loud. And the, the sounds as well are spot on. They really are. They, are. they must have been recorded off a real Dominator because I can remember those sounds perfectly from the real thing. And I didn't really listen to it that for that long, obviously, and it was a long time ago, but I can still remember it to this day. The sounds are perfect. I, actually, I think this has actually been converted from FS13. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it has been. So the first thing to do is to, of course, unfold the harvester. Like that. And then I think we'll work from the bottom and go up to the top. We go around the headland three times first. Switch 
switch our beacons off. And yeah, to, to do the ladder, F no, numpad 8. And to do the door, numpad 7. That is our air conditioning. Actually, it could have had air conditioning, I'm not sure. But yeah, <laughs> if you want a bit of fresh air, we've got the door. Um, just checking to see if there's anything else. It says you can register the harvester, so I'm guessing that is a number plate. Let's just have a look here. It is. I've done uh, Dagwin before. Might get old if I keep doing it. Uh, but let's 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 try Dagwin. I don't think it fits actually. Yeah, it doesn't quite fit, but it should still look roughly right. We're a character short. That's where it's appeared. Yeah, I think you get the idea from that. It does roughly say Dagwin. So let's get it going. I will make sure the sound is fairly low. Okay, here we go. This mod is fantastic. I love it. This is our first time on the oats since Iron Horse Farm. And I think, yeah, the Dominator is just the best harvester for this job today. Because we haven't really used too many different harvesters. I tend to use the same one over again. I think on Sandy Bay we have actually only used that Lexian. So it's very nice to see an older harvester. I do tend to stick with class though when it comes to doing the mods because it's my favourite make of combine. Uh, you might have a different opinion on that, but it is my favourite, and also you don't get any class combines as standard with Farming Simulator, so it's nice to, to use a different make to normal. Because you get the, the New Holland and the Case, which are very similar combines anyway. And in the previous versions, we had the Fent, for example, so the class has never been a standard harvester in Farming Simulator. That's why I tend to go for it. But also because they're just brilliant. I think I do need to get a bit of a mixing deck because when you change the game sound from 10% to 20% there is actually a huge difference in volume. And I would like to do a bit more of a fine tuning on it. I don't really want to have such a drastic change between each one. It's also easier to change the volume. We're getting full. We'll get the auger out. I think people tend to leave the auger out on, out on one of these because if there's nothing to hit, you might as well. And I think the trailer we've chosen is the best one for the job. There we go. Go and get the tractor. I have got the manual ignition mod back on as well. I know quite a few people were missing that. Our first trailer load of oats. It is definitely good and nice to use different multi fruits as well instead of the common four. Now this Dominator was actually released last summer, so it's taken me a while to find it, but it's definitely worth it. I'm going to put the download link below in the description, along with the credits, 
and also if it was transferred from FS13 I'll also put the original author as well. I'm pretty sure I remember reading somewhere that it was just converted over but I'm not 100% sure. We're almost around the first time. It is going to take a long time just to do the small field but it's all part of the fun using a smaller harvester. We will have to put it onto a worker when we go and empty the trailer. We can afford a worker, but obviously it's ideal not to use one. But it is very helpful during the harvest. I suppose one other thing as well, if you've got a worker doing it, then the swaths of straw stay a lot straighter. Much straighter than what I can do. They always t seem to be wavy. That's the thing with the smaller headers. Now you may ask, why am I actually putting this onto a swath mode instead of just chopping it? Well, I would quite like to have some oat straw. We do need some more bales and we can also sell them. So I think it is worth it. It's time to unload again. I've put it on a worker. It's 98% full. So it's going to get to 100% before we get there. But the good thing is, it's going to continue on its own. Now, we've actually emptied an entire combine tank load into this trailer, and it is only 19% full. So we'll actually be able to unload the combine into this trailer each time, a minimum of five times. That is impressive. Or not impressive at all, if you're thinking about the capacity of the combine harvester. So we've now got four loads in here. It has actually gone over 80% though because we were unloading on the move. So it's actually going to be probably just short of five loads in the end because we've obviously put more in. Um, but we're almost there. I either need to work out where to tip this in the yard, hopefully at Willow Farm, or I'm just going to sell it straight off. Also does depend on the price of course. I could check that now. Okay, so oats are currently on the rise. Um, the price is £643 per tonne at Sandy Bay stores and £624 per tonne at Littleham stores. That's okay because we're nearer to Sandy Bay stores anyway, so we actually get a better price. So the first load or two, we will actually tip. The price is likely to change within three minutes though because it changes every hour. Um, but it shouldn't change for the worst because we haven't actually sold them yet. So, first load we will actually go and sell. Second load, we'll likely put it into storage. I think we'll get this unloaded now before it turns around. I've got it set now so that it comes back up the field rather than going around the field. I think three headlands is quite enough. See if we can fill it with this load. Yep, easy. So we now have a full trailer of oats. We will go and sell this first one. I will put the cover on because of the brake net driving. And also we, do, we have to go down that really steep road and uh, get a bit carried away on there. I'm not quite sure where you actually store the oats. I would have thought there would be a shed very close to the common crops such as wheat, barley, canola and corn. We will have to take a look though. We won't have time after tipping this because that harvester is actually filling up really quickly. So we've got to get back to it. So 
see how much we can get. It is 9 o'clock. So the price may have changed, but if it has, it shouldn't have changed by much. It might have even improved. Just have a look quickly. Um, oh no, it has actually gone down slightly. We were a minute too late. Still? £14,842 doesn't sound too bad. The harvester is already full, so we need to rush back to it. It would certainly be easier to just to be taking it to Willow Farm, because it is so much closer. We will have to do some investigation work. There's the harvester, sat there waiting to be emptied. So that is another full combine load into the trailer. You can see how neat it's doing it. That's what I do like about the workers. They do a very neat job, which makes it very easy when it comes to baling it. Now this field is one of those fields where you think we should probably use a conventional baler. The last time I used a conventional baler, it was a disaster because I didn't know how to pick them up. But I have been recently sent some, some different trailers which might pick it up but I don't want to risk doing a field and then finding out it's not going to pick any up at all. So has anyone actually used um, any conventional baler, the small bales, and the trailer to pick them up and it's worked su successfully? I would love to know. Okay, so this time we're not quite full, but I just really want to go to the farm and see where you tip the oats. The harvester is still going, it's just turning around. It is a bit slow at turning around, but at least it gets the job done quite well. So we go down here, the, the rough bumpy track, this goes to the main yard at Willow Farm. Um, we'll turn left because I don't think it'll be on the right because that's where the, the cows and the pigs are. We want to go left into here. And I would have thought the storage point is somewhere around the back. Somewhere around here. Because we've got barley, and wheat, corn and canola. But, hmm, I can't see anywhere for oats. I'm sure there will be somewhere. But I'm just missing it. Ah, you might be able to just put it into here. There must be a shed somewhere I would have thought. But if this works, then at least it's in storage. Yeah, that's alright then. As long as it is actually going in storage. Yep, good. So... We'll have to do that. If anyone knows where the storage point is, then it'd be really useful to know. But, yeah, we can just put it in the pit there and then use this pipe here to fill the, the lorry or the trailer afterwards. You can actually go out of that way as well. Which we'll do, because that is a much better shortcut. Instead of going all the way down that bumpy track. 
Got to get back to the combine harvester. It's doing the field really quickly in the end. I thought it would take a long time, but really, I think it's been about 40 minutes maximum, which isn't too bad, because it is a very small combine harvester. Quite impressed with it, really. It's over halfway. It's probably close to two thirds. So it's looking good. Okay, once again, we are emptying. This will be our third trailer load. And we're going to take it to the yard again. Already quite full. Should be filling it from the back, really, because I get a lot of comments saying, fill from the back first. I think not only is it for weight distribution, but it's also so you can actually see through the window. You can see what you're filling at the back. And then you fill the front after that, so you can, you can just judge how full the whole trailer is. Okay, so we have got around 16% space left in the trailer. The harvester is not full, but it will certainly fill our trailer. We will just get it to 100% and then we're we'll going to tip it. If I can drive in a straight line, that is. Okay. So that is, once again, 100%. I don't like driving over the straw, but it's a long way round, and we won't get back to the combine in time. That'd be a poor excuse in real life, wouldn't it? But yeah, in farming simulation, it doesn't actually make any difference. So there we go. The pit is filling up again. Each time you tip into it, it fills up. You have to wait for it to recede. That is fine. And it looks like it's going to be really good timing because the harvester is just turning around at the top and it's on 93%. So we're going to catch it just in time before it is full. And this is it, this is the final little bit of the field. It's all gonna fit in the trailer, definitely. So I think it's actually been a very good day. It hasn't even taken that long, so I'm really impressed. We will just drive up to the top of the field so we can unload the harvester when it gets up there. And then we'll just tip it, and that'll be the field completed. And back to the yard. Only 60% in this trailer load. So really, it was three full trailer loads, pretty much. I think there was one which wasn't quite full. And uh, then 60% in this one. So probably overall about three and a half trailer loads, which isn't really that bad. And that was also with it fertilized because we rolled this field. This is the one we rolled, um, which has definitely made a difference. finish off by tipping this in the pit. We'll see how much we've got in storage. We've already sold one trailer load so it won't be everything but it should still be quite impressive. We have got 57,917 litres in storage now so what we'll do is we'll wait until the demand is high and then we'll sell it at the right time. So just part this here. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. I certainly have really do like that combine harvester and this tractor and the trailer so really a good setup today but thanks again and i hope to see you again soon bye for now